so, um, in terms of the control selection, let's uh, go to an example. Um, let's look at honeypots. Uh, now, honeypots are fun. Um, everybody thinks this is great. You know, you're tr sort of tricking the tricksters. You are... Uh, finding out things about your attackers and and so on and so forth. Um, but I mean, let's let's look at it realistically. Is this protection? No, it's not. As as protection, this is not effective. You have, um, you know, well, depending on the size here company, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of systems to protect, and you've got one honey, honey pot out there. Um, you know, it's going to be random chance whether the attacker hits your honey pot before he hits something else. Um, and, and the something else may, in fact, be the machine that is controlling your honey pot. So, you know, think about that for an instance. Um, but, you know, it's, it's going to be random chance whether it, it does any protection, whether you detect an attack before somebody is actually attacking you. Uh, honey pots, um, like I say, you know, they're fun, they're, they're amusement, they, uh, uh, in aggregate, can give you uh, information about what attackers are doing um, in in general terms, but in terms of who's attacking you, what systems they are attacking, what specific you are attacks are happening against you right now, um, you know, honeypots probably are not going to give you any protection in that regard, and in in isolation, your honeypot is not necessarily going to uh, give you information um, at, at least you know not an awful lot as I say in aggregate you know you join a group you you know contribute with with other people um, you collect information over time and uh, over the uh, totality of, of all the honey pots that are out there yeah you know that uh, is it provides us with with some utility value, but in in terms of effective protection, this is not a a countermeasure. This is not a safeguard. This is this is kind of background research, and and that's about it. Um, so you know, in in terms of. Uh, countermeasure selection and in terms of the the effectiveness of it uh, no um, in terms of your own education um, and, and in you know uh, association with others who are doing the same thing yeah it's it's fun it's good it's useful um, but it's it's not protection um, so uh, now, there are other factors there, and when we get to um, law enforcement and ethics and, and that domain, um, we're going to be looking at what you can and cannot do in terms of an investigation, what you can and cannot present in terms of evidence, and it's possible that uh, a honeypot, depending on how you set it up, can be seen as entrapment. Um, now. Uh, there's a difference between entrapment and enticement. Generally speaking, honeypots are uh, seen as, as enticement rather than entrapment, and, and therefore, uh, you know, it's, it's permissible in terms of collection of information and, and uh, the presentation of evidence. But, you know, do, do be careful. Uh, you've you've got to look at at uh, those sorts of aspects as well. Um, now, does does a you know a 
honeypot doesn't really give you any protection, doesn't present you with any danger, uh, again, you know, you're going to have to uh, look at how you've set it up. Um, how much is the honeypot system open to the rest of your network? Um, uh, you know, have you got all of the um, uh, communications channels and, and even covert channels uh, monitored to uh, detect what is going on on the machine and, and to prevent it being actually used to attack you? Um, uh, knowing what is happening on, on that machine all the time uh, in terms of whether or not uh, uh, somebody can break into it and use that as a platform for launching certain types of attacks against the rest of your, uh, your network, your systems. So, um, you know, we've, we've got to pay attention to that. Um, is the honeypot itself as an asset protected? Um, and when we detect something, you know, what, what kind of reaction do you do? Are you just watching? Are you shutting it down? Uh, when you report to management, uh, are they going to say, you know, pull the plug? Because uh, they just don't want to know. Um, all of these things have to be determined in advance. All of these things have to be decided. And you need to, to know. You need to recognize. You need to understand um, uh, how it is. And so, you know, put that thought into it. And that thought has to go into the selection of all your countermeasures, all your safeguards, all your controls. And uh, that should include the ones that you have now, that you are relying on. You know, uh, put them through the ringer. Uh, put them to the test. See if they stand up to, uh, you know, an investigation of whether or not this is a good idea, whether or not they are, in fact, uh, providing you with the protection that you think they are providing you with, uh, whether they're providing you with any protection, um, whether they are worthwhile, uh, whether, you know, the cost-benefit analysis uh, stands up with regard to these things. You know, how much are they consuming in terms of the resources, the time, the attention uh, that you have to put into them uh, and and the total cost, you know, the, the maintenance, everything that goes into it, the training. Um, and is it, you know, is it worth it? So, uh, you know, that is what you have to do in terms of selecting all of your countermeasures, all of your safeguards, all of your controls. Uh, you know, that's how you do it.